Hello everyone and welcome to The Pointless episode for Classics for the Family This is something I uh, I intended to do this as A segment that would Be at the end of every Vox adventure But then I Just never got around to doing it So here we go Now today it is Ivanhoe Why Ivanhoe? Why not? This is one of the great books of one of the great works of literature. I'm I'm sorry, I'm really not I'm not a scripted person. I'd probably only be scripted when I'm doing wrong plays. Uh it's about the Saxon Norman conflict. Uh but that one not require a bit of a a bit of a history lesson. Long story short, Edward the Confessor died, had his Erbius Norman cousin William over in Normandy. The Saxon nobles in England elected his brother in law, Harold Godwinson. Boom, Norman conquest of England. Harold gets an arrow to the eye at the Battle of Hastings. He dies, William is king. There you go. And basically, the whole thing that resulted was. Well, you know who William the Conqueror is now. He's the guy who conquered England because his uh, right had been his right to the throne had been stolen by someone who wasn't even a blood relative of the previous king. So basically, that was in 1066. Ivanhoe is 128 years later in 1194. So you've got King Richard, you've got Prince John, you've got Robin Hood, you've got Friar Tuck, but most of all, you've got Ivanhoe. A disinherited knight, a disinherited Saxon knight. Why has he been disinherited? For following King Richard to the th onto the Third Crusade by his father Cedric the Saxon. Now you've also got the character of Lady Rowena, descended from Alfred the Great, who was the first king, mind you, of a unified England. Before that, it was eight individual kingdoms, each one the bitter rival of the next. So, uh, Lady Rowena is in love with Ivanhoe. Cedric wants her to marry his nephew Athelstan, who is descended from Harold Godwinson. Lastless beard. And, uh. Yeah, you've got some Jewish woman who falls in love with Ivanhoe. Who cares? No, I'm just joking. Rebecca's a main in character. Uh. uh besides, uh. Besides racial conflict, there's also religious conflict between Christians and Jews. And besides Rebecca, you have her father Isaac of York, who is in some ways the greedy Jew stereotype, but at the same time he's not. And really considering that he's living in England uh, during the regency of Prince John, uh, it, the greed isn't entirely unjustified, but it's a bit complicated, and uh, his love for money is second for the love of his daughter. So Isaac isn't entirely a terrible person, and he does supply Ivanhoe with the armor he needs uh, for a tournament. But the villain, the main villain in this, is Brian de Bois Gilbert, a knight templar who. Actually, I'm not sure if it's it's a bit of love, a bit of lust, uh, some strange combination. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but yeah, he's a pretty complex villain. Uh, uh, one of my all-time favorites. But uh, enough about that. Uh, Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is a 
pretty dark book, and I was actually introduced to it as a kid via the show Ivanhoe the King's Knight. I don't have the DVD because, well, it hasn't been released in English-speaking countries. I know that Mill Creek Entertainment has a uh, access from the library of DHX Media, but I they have not yet released the complete series on DVD. Hell, they haven't released the series at all on DVD. I want the series on DVD before the next adaptation of Ivanhoe comes out. Because someone is working on it, apparently with the... Sorry about that guys, I had a bit of technical difficulties, but now let's, uh, let's move on. I've talked about the book itself, but the point... Uh... Oh, for... Oh, thank God, I thought it was about... I thought I was about to have more technical difficulties. Uh, the point of this series is to give you adaptations of those classics that are suitable for the family. Because uh, there's a lot of archaic speech in, uh, in the book. Uh, and a lot of things that may be considered not child-friendly, so... Yeah, let's move on. It's if you want to introduce your kids, nephews, younger cousins, younger siblings to the to these things, I will show you what I hardly recommend. Now I start with what. Well, technically, I. What did I start with? I started with Ivanhoe, the King's Knight, the, oh, for the love of... This, this is what I started with, actually. Uh, it's not a, le a straight adaptation, it's a spiritual adaptation. It takes the Saxon-Norman conflict from Ivanhoe, which actually featured Robin Hood as a secondary character. And puts it in here. So, this is what I started with. It's a famous film. It's considered the best Robin Hood, but I find any a, a, any adaptation of Robin Hood to be better than this. But it's good. Uh, the rating, it's it's got a nice clean G rating up here in Canada. Uh, down in the US, I don't know what it is, but whatever's good with you, it's got some good swashbuckling. It's got Aaron Flynn as Robin Hood, Olivia de Havilland as Marion, and Basil Rathbone at you no know, well, he's Sherlock Holmes himself as the villain Guy of Gisborne. And yet again, another role where he was never allowed to win a sword fight. Never mind him being a better fencer than Aaron Flynn. But anyway, uh... Next we come to this. Right. Hold on. It... Yeah. This is more of a straight adaptation, but it's not the best. In many ways, it's the opposite of the 1997 miniseries, which expanded it to the, to develop characters who didn't get any development, only to turn them into not any correct cliché. So, stay away from the miniseries. Stay away! AWAY! Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, this is a compressed adaptation, and it, it's really riding on the coattails of this, which came 14 years prior. It has uh, King Richard, a prisoner in Austria, and it's all about gaining. It's all about freeing him via paying for his ransom. So. Instead of the disinherited knight, you have Arvin Ho as the black knight. You also have Arvin Ho wearing some Aaron Flynn-esque Robin 
had clothing, even though he played. Okay, Robert Taylor plays Ivanhoe. He wears some clothing that looks more like something Alan Flynn would have worn in Robin Hood. So, and we've got Jean Fontaine, the sister of Olivia de Havilland, as Lady Rowena. It's a good movie. A bit too much on the spectacle, if you ask me, but it is what it is. And uh, next I ended up with this. Oh jeez. It's good. I hardly recommend it if you're trying to get your whatever your younger relative is to read because uh, at the end here you have this. Now that you have read the Classics Illustrated Edition, don't miss the added enjoyment of reading the original obtainable at your school or public library. Now this is a reprint of something originally done in the 40s or 50s, I'm not sure, and it's got this beautifully uh, redone col this beautifully restored colors, it's really great, and after that I, oh, for the love of what did I go to next? Now, I ended up with one of these next. Uh, this Classics Illustrated had its revival in the 80s or 90s, and um, it's had a recent revival again, and it's still going strong. This is. It's not exactly. It's not literally the same as less. It's more faithful in some ways, but less faithful than others, and oh man, the artwork. Is it ever something? Hold on, let me find out. Um, would you look at this beautiful watercolor artwork? And, uh, Let's, let's see what we've got at the back here. Oh yes, there it is. Now that you have read the Classics Illustrated Edition, don't miss the added enjoyment of reading the original. Obtainable at your school or public library. And for added enjoyment, it does this. For the... Now that the internet exists. Or online at your favorite bookseller. I actually got my edition of Ivanhoe for Christmas, so... But, uh... This, this was actually done in 1986 by a company go called Burbank Films Australia. It's very good, has excellent voice acting. The uh, animation may seem Hanna-Barbera-esque, but... Who cares? It's quite good. It's not at all dumbed down, but it's not very dark. On the other hand, uh, having one of the villains fall to his death via the burning inferno that was his castle on the... Sounds kind of dark, so your mileage may vary. Moving on. Yeah. Actually, hold on one sec. Oh, Mummy Dearest, why do you take the dress stand? I can't believe I just said Mummy Dearest. Now, you have this. It's a wonderful ten set... Uh, no, not ten set. It, a ten... Ten set thing. Uh, feet, uh, that's from the Ivanhoe, but it's not Ivanhoe. It's Reginald Fortabuff, one of the villains. Why is he... I have no idea. Uh, it's good. It, these are all hour long, from the 60s to the 90s. Uh, it's good. The, the stories are Ben Hur, The Black Arrow, Call of the Wild, From Earth to the Moon, uh, Ivanhoe, obviously, uh, Kidnapped, 
The Legend of Robin Hood, Robinson Crusoe, The Swiss Family Robinson, and The Travels of Marco Polo. And this is actually in the first volume of The Greatest Towns Ever Told a collection. Now, I might do the second one another time if I do a Treasure Island, Les Mis, a Phantom of the Opera. I don't know. I'm, I may, I may not. But yeah, I hardly recommend this. Look, music may be uh, a bit stock. It keeps appearing in a lot of the other specials. But I find it to be quite like earworm. Now this, this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, from what? 1 to 99. Less. It's the most faithful screen adaptation of Ivanhoe ever put to screen. A television movie in 19, made in 1982. It has Anthony Andrews as Ivanhoe. Uh, not pictured as Julian Glover as King Richard. Olivia Hussey as Rebecca, not pictured as Ronald Pickup as Prince John, and Sam Neill as Brian de Bois Gilbert. Here his name is shortened to Brian Gilbert. You've got a lot of other great actors. You've got James Mason as Isaac of York, Michael Hordern as Cedric Le Saxon. John Rice Davies himself as Reginald Front de Buff, the most brutal uh, villain you'll ever find in a Walter Scott novel, and really, it's perhaps one of John's uh, more intimidating performances. But the last one is another spiritual adaptation I have to show you. Patrick. Bergen starred in this in 1991. It was in the same year as Prince of Themes, but I consider it better. It, it too shares the Saxon Norman conflict story, but while it may seem dark, it's that's only how it looks. It's actually quite light. I enjoy it. It's got a PG rating up here in Canada, but a G rating down in America, despite the uh, Uh, the middle finger being given it and some people call the Canadian rating system weird it, this is a PG not rated but it's pretty good it, it keeps a it has a similar feel to it only advent to Aaron Flynn's Adventures of Robin Hood it, I highly recommend these and I really look forward to when Ivan Holler King's Knight is released on DVD I introduced my young co cousins to Ivan through Lee's and someday when I'm married and I have kids of my own I re I really do want to introduce them to Ivan via Lee's it's a great story and it would be a shame if it became something obscure so anyway, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want, and provided if I've read the book and if I have adaptations of it, leave a suggestion down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll be doing Hunchback of Notre Dame next time. See ya!